Good. We all feel Stop! good. Stop! Never gets rusty what am I doing? into my kitchen. Producer Drew, can you fix all this? And when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can crumple, crumple, yeet! Saw so that going differently. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. All right, I've never done this uh, outside, or I can't remember doing one in Stockholm anyway, and I can't remember doing one with a live audience. Woo! Let's go. Guys, can you do it for me? Leafs win! Three to two over the Detroit Red Wings, and they did it in the most Leaf way possible. It's the only way they know how to win games, man. They go down 2 nothing. I had people coming up to me like, this is my first hockey game, and I'm really happy to be here, and they might get shut out. Like, so that damaged Leaf fan psyche travels across the Atlantic. But Jesse Blake, shout out to Jesse Blake, they came out and won. And I got to say, this second line, this is their coming out party. This is exactly what we've been hoping for for a while. So let's start back at where it all went wrong. It went wrong for the Red Wings first. Jake Wallman takes an awful tumble into the net. I have no idea what he hurt, but I know he hurt something. As for um, the goal that wasn't a goal or may or may not have been a goal, producer Drew and I sat in our seats and watched this replay no less than 400 times. And like a lot of things with the National Hockey League, we have no friggin' idea if it was a goal or not. So Leafs goes back the other way. Detroit scores first. Of course Detroit scores first. And then what happens? Lucas Raymond scores second. And the crowd goes wild. You don't want the crowd to go wild, even though it's technically a home game for them. Third period arrives, and so do the Leafs. Big Burt, Tyler Bertuzzi, Perfectly, there's a, I didn't know cars could drive here. I'm not gonna lie. I, they can park over there? All right, drive safe, have a good night. I didn't know that was a thing. Big Bert, Tyler Bertuzzi with honestly, probably his best game as a Toronto Maple Leaf so far. And it happened against the Detroit Red Wings. Mwah. I was saying to producer Drew a couple weeks ago when I was saying get off my team because of the Boston Bruins, we don't have to talk about that anymore. He's now that he's playing well, he's so funny to watch. He has the most ridiculous, chaotic style in the NHL, the flow, the missing tooth. And he always just looks like he woke up like five minutes, maybe before his shift started. He gets things started, though. His uh, fourth goal of the season, then Leafs power play. We like that because the Leafs had a parade to the box before that. William Nylander scores to make it 2-2. And what did you say when Nylander scored? They were all very happy. They were jubilant even. And that might not be because it was majority Leafs fans in the stands. It might be because it was majority Nylander family members in the stands. They panned the audience and it was just like a sea of blonde people. Hey, Dougie. What? Yo, that's crazy. That is not the reveal I thought was going to happen, buddy. Go Leafs, go. That was go, sick. <laughs> that was sick. All right. That must have hurt like hell, by the way. Anyway, and then Drew's like, one of these teams is going to have like a heartbreaking loss. It's going to be in the final 30 seconds, and they're not even going to get a point. And I said to my friend, Drew, kindly, gently, shut up! Dude, you're going to wreck it! Except John Tavares wrecked the home game, the alleged home game. It's like a lot of Atlantic Division games. The Leafs have the majority of the fans there. John Tavares bangs in the beautiful feed from Tyler Bertuzzi. It's 3-2. The Leafs tried to give it back a couple times, but they bent and didn't break. Elias Samsonov, he goes down earlier in the game. He's already given up two goals. The trainer comes out and sees him. The puck caught him in a funny spot around his collarbone, but he stayed in the game and won the thing. Love it, and um, we we don't have uh, questions on Twitter, so I don't. Sh should I ask people? I'm gonna ask people. But first, Bobby McMahon has had an impact in this lineup already. Sheldon Keefe had the fourth line out there with three minutes to go, which he would have never done with Ryan Reeves on that line. So he's been an effective player coming up from the Marlies. Nick Barden is going to talk about another player who could come up in the near future and be effective for the Leafs. After that, we'll get to questions.
When looking at Alex Steves' game this season with the Martleys, the part that stuck out most for me is his confidence. Looking at last season and where his confidence was then versus now, it's complete night and day. This past week, I spoke one-on-one -on -one with the Maple Leafs prospect about a number of things, including how playing with confidence can change his game. The best way to describe it is... I'd, I'd look at my two goals in Laval. Uh, I wouldn't have scored either of those goals if I didn't have confidence because I never would have taken either of those pucks into the shooting position to then score and probably wouldn't have even shot it either. So uh, you have to uh, be willing and uh, believe in your shot to use your shot. At the time of recording this video, Steve's is on a nine game point streak with the Marlies, the longest active streak right now in the AHL. And in those nine games, Steve's has a whopping eight goals. But Marlies head coach John Gruden says Steve's is playing well off the puck, which allows him to get the puck back and have a lot more scoring chances. Steve's hasn't played in an NHL game since March 7th. And if it were me, I'd be calling him up next if there's an injury on the wing for the Maple Leafs. He He's been that good. First LFR question, what, uh, what's your name and where are you from? Eric from Gothenburg. And what's your question? How much is William Nylander going to cost? William Nylander is going to cost, okay, first of all, everything here is like 10 times more than it is in Canada. <laughs> so he's going to cost like 200 million, what is it, kroner? Kroner. kroner. It's, it's going to cost like 200 million kroner per season at this rate. And I wasn't down for paying it at the beginning of the season, but we've never seen a William Nylander this good, ever. Like, he was fantastic last year. He's managed to outdo it. Like, 16 points, or 16 straight games with a point to start the season. He's absolutely goofy. What would you pay him? A lot. <laughs> a lot. I'm Alex, and I'm from the UK. Who are you trading to keep Nylander? <sighs> Always bubble bursting, Alex. Oh, I know. I, like they, they just won a game. <laughs> I know. No, I get it. Who are you trading? So Jesse Blake had a lovely idea where the Leafs go through one year of pain. Uh, Tavares, when he re-signs, ideally, yeah. he takes less, and Nylander and him basically good. swap contracts. Yeah. The problem with that is what are they going to do? Like basically play with garbage men and – Zamboni driver, who knows? Zamboni asking. drivers are undefeated in this league. They, so, especially against the Leafs. <laughs> especially against the Leafs. So all we got to do is get them on our side. Yeah. Um, like, listen, uh, uh, like Brody is on an expiring contract. Yeah. I don't know how they bring him back. Um, he might be a guy that they just have to let walk. Um, I mean, the obvious answer to your question yeah. is Mitch Marner, but, like, yeah. that ship sailed. Like, right. he's got a full no move. And unless he's got a recent – unknown love for Ohio, uh, I, I, I <laughs> don't think going. it's going to happen. Not going, no. I don't think it's going to happen. So uh, it's going to be a very, it's very a tricky. A yeah, one. but they have to announce it tomorrow, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, I, I thought you were. I don't know. Oh, I, I thought it was Chris Johnston, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you and what's your name? Hovart from Norway. Excellent to meet you. What's your question? Are you getting tired of the amount of comeback wins this season? Am I getting tired of the amount of comeback wins? Uh, no, on account of they still win, which I do, I do like the W in there, and also it's November. November in the hockey season is like November in real life. It's okay to have junk food. It's okay to have all the de delicious treats and sweets and get all fat. And then once Santa Claus comes and goes and you say, uh, Happy New Year, here six hours before you do in Toronto, um, that is when you buckle down. That's when you start eating right. You get your celery, your oatmeal, your kale, whatever. Well, like, what, what would you eat to stay in shape? I need to take advice from you. Don't take advice from me. I won't take advice from you then. <laughs> Under your advice. But see, if I don't take your advice, that's taking your advice. Anyway, I digress. So the, the junk food in real life that comes with the holiday season uh, comes with uh, the hockey season. You, you buckle down, uh, you say, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm never going to drink again, and the team that ends up winning is the team that's actually telling the truth. So the Leafs have to be that team this year. They're not yet. <laughs> What's up? Doing the, doing the LFR. <laughs> One last thing before we go, I got to give a big shout out to Jan and the Yager brothers from the Czech Republic. They gave me this uh, Kladno scarf. Any Kladno fans? Right here. Oh, there's one guy. There you go. So for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. Talk some yet from Stockholm.